TV. And welcome to Out of the Fog. I'm your host, Lori Lydia Loveless. Tonight we have an exciting show for you. First, we have Constanza with Newborn Lander, which is a brand new children's accessory and clothing line made locally right here in Newfoundland. Next, we have John Finn with the School Lunch Association. And we'll be right back after this short message. And welcome back. Now we're with Constanza Safaltli, who is the CEO and founder of Newborn Lander, which is a children's um, fashion and accessory store. So Constanza, welcome to the show today. Thank you so much. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your brand. Well, um, I am an immigrant. I am from Chile, and I moved here supporting my husband in education, as many immigrants with some challenges, especially in language, and I couldn't access to the labor market. I am a lawyer back home. The transfer of credential was impossible, so I decided to start my own business and my own space to create also a space for other women like me that are outside of the labor market. So they learn English in the space, we teach them how to sew, and we create beautiful products handmade here locally in St. John's. That's great. And you know, seeing all your design, so as designing and fashion always been something you've been interested in or how did you make this into a full-on profession? Yeah, well, I never was interested on. <laughs> I never touched a sewing machine before. Again, I was a commercial lawyer. I work in the Bank of Chile back home. So I was like starting my promising career. And um, But I believe that one of the superpower and of being immigrants is that and you need to reinvent yourself. Um, and it is an opportunity to make chief, big chief in your life. So for me, it was discovered that I had a great skills, which is sewing and design, which I never thought that I have that skills. And definitely I have a gift. And um, yeah, oh, absolutely. And here we are. <laughs> And you've actually showcased your designs on a popular TV show, Dragon's Den. So can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that experience? Well, the Dragon's Den was a big uh -huh moment for me <laughs> because I believe, um, one, you don't need to be an expert in your industry. That is not true. And that is what happened to me. I never been an expert in manufacturing or textile, which is good because you come without rules. But when you think that you want to start a business today, we are in this big trend of tech. Right. And maybe many young entrepreneurs believe that for being an entrepreneur and successful entrepreneur, you need to create a really high tech app or something. And I know it can be something so simple like sewing baby accessories. So for m me, when I applied to Dragon's Den was because I really believe that we have a story to tell, that our story is unique and powerful. So I believe that if these dragons, which are big investor, doesn't matter the size of my business or even like what we are doing, because if I tell you we do baby hats, maybe it's not too sexy business to invest. <laughs> but if I was able to tell the story and engage them more in their humanity and call to that many of them have a background as an immigrant, I knew they would be engaged. Mm -hmm. So the experience as an entrepreneur was amazing. Mm -hmm. And the experience to hear them, to talk with them, and to spread the voice about what we are doing in New Berlander was really powerful. And you know, what makes your brand unique to in comparison to all others out there? I know that you know uh, lots of parents favor your, your <laughs> brands and your, your fashion. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I, I, I like to explain that in three different pillars that I believe that we have. One is the product itself the quality, the design, that we have a, a little magic there because a lot of parents tell us like, 
your hat is the only hat that my children keep on. <laughs> it's like, well, I don't know why, but <laughs> that is what happened. And so we always think when we design and choose fabric, we think in the child and in the parent, I will not fight with my children to put a hat mm -hmm. in the morning. So need to appeal for both. So the design and quality is one thing, the product itself. The other one is the social and environmental impact mm -hmm. that um, these products have. So um, our customers are people that care about the environment and care about who is behind the machine, the textile industry. It is one of the have the higher number of human exploitations that most of time are children's and moms and women's, you know? And so all these have a local impact in our economy, but also in the life of the women that manufacture this product. I know immigration is a huge topic across Canada, and I always like to say this quote that it's not your fault, but it's your problem. Mm -hmm. It is our problem right now, and we need to do something. And I did not solve the whole problem, but we can alleviate it. Mm -hmm. And the other pillar, it is the heritage of Newfoundland and Labrador and, and from our Atlantic provinces as well in our products. And so we try to choose fabrics that might talk about the space or where we are. And, um, and a big background of heritage, it is our new accessory, which is the Island NL that we will launch soon. So tell us a little bit about these items that you have here. I mean, they are beautiful designs and I have to just say like, look how sweet they are. <laughs> yes. And you know, they are just so beautiful designs. And um, so tell us a little bit about what we have here today. Yes, yeah, so well, the story of New Orleans always been focused in accessories. We don't do clothes because manufacture clothes and compete with the retail it is tough but you know we believe like as an adult we choose a special glasses you know your wallet like the accessory so we believe okay the trend today is like and children are wearing solid color really minimalist so the catching eyes it is the accessory the hat right. and so that is our big core hats the booties and beep. many of the products that you see there was developed wow. thinking in real utilize like use the fabric that are left in the process of cutting of the cutting process so and we take care about every single piece trying to maximize that and have hopefully at less waste possible but a big inspiration was the island enailed by new Lander, this product that you see here and there we have two the big island and the small island so the big island it is an accessory for a sleep Oh, excellent. So so the, the child can sleep in this, is that? In the bigger in one. In the big one. In okay, the big one. Excellent. And the small one, it is developed to have a play time, you know, yeah. a practice the tummy time, starting the seating. But what promised the island to the moms and children and baby is a transportable piece of home. Mm -hmm. And what promised to the women that are making the island, that are refugee women, is a little piece of home in their new island that they are living, which is Newfoundland and Labrador. Yes. So this is, a, we want to create a project, a settlement employment project for refugee women. So the revenue of the island will be invest in have ESL classes in the store and have training in sewing and then employment. So it is a big project that speaks a lot about our social commitment and mission. And, um, and I believe this could be a big before and after of our um, business, thanks to this product. And your business has been booming and you know, you've been doing incredible things you know, in our community and all over the world. You actually represented Canada recently. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. So I was selected to represent Canada in the G20 as a young entrepreneur. And also I was picked from the 45 and representative from Canada to be a guest speaker and in the G20 and my topic was environmental, social and governance, ESG that today is a big topic for all companies. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy to think and, and I feel that is life and I am so grateful about that from Dragon's Den, the G20, winning national awards because when you believe that you are a small business starting in a home base in home, you know, in my house, I started with a domestic machine with $360. I started this business. And then you see all the impact that have that we are talking now in international stage. And it's really powerful. 
And, and I feel it is also a really good remind um, to myself, to my team, that doesn't matter, and everyone, that doesn't matter the size of your business. And your impact can be so powerful that in New Orleans exceed the yeah. size of the business. That is amazing. And, you know, we've actually met before, Constanza. You know, we actually met at the uh, St. John's uh, Fashion Week, which is the very first one, and they showcase your yeah. um, fashions and your designs. How did that feel for you? That feels really good, really <laughs> challenging. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, my environment is immigration, entrepreneurship, but fashion, I never consider myself like a designer. So when I get selected to be a designer in the St. John's Fashion Week, I was like, well, this is a title or label that I never had, like I never thought or I never think about it. But it is funny to see the perception and because truly I am a designer, mm -hmm. I have skills, it is just, I, I never, it's still new for me. So it's really kind of funny and impressive to see like, at first for me it was a challenge to own that title. I am a designer and children's will be, you know, wear my hats and clothes and it is a brand and that is recognized. So that was really powerful and challenging at the same time, but I have so much fun and I was so honored to be in the stage in the, you know, the first day and with other amazing designers of clothes. Mm -hmm. Some people approach to me like, oh, you make this teacher or your sweater and it's like no I just know how to do this <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's everything. It's everything so yeah. it was a great great and powerful experience I love to see this kind of initiative happening in our province I believe our province is growing is welcoming more people and it's so nice to see how much we are able to develop and integrate through art through culture through design and you know, all the rest of, you know, nations that are arriving here. That's amazing. And so how can people, you know, buy your items and, uh, you know, get some of your designs? Yes, yeah, so we have a beautiful website. I love my website, it's <laughs> truly beautiful. I think it speaks so well about our brand. So it's www.newborlander.ca. We have a storefront location at 3 Cashin Avenue. If you go to that space, you will see how we manufacture the products. I feel that is the beauty of our store that you enter and you will see two open blue doors that will be show you who is behind the machine. Some people go and want something, a hat in this fabric, and we are like, okay, can you wait five minutes? We will do it for you. Wow. So it's like cooking yeah. <laughs> on time. And so and we will be there all this you know christmas season pumpkin halloween all that you will I find there yeah. so um, and it's beautiful it's a beautiful space to be that's excellent so you know with regards to that do you have anything else through the pipeline that you're working on for the future yeah well i believe the again the island nl this is a huge product have a strong and powerful story I believe that my commitment, and I always believe in, in change, in the power of change that come from different ways. One, it is from community. The other one is from the private sector, and the other one come from, you know, the system in general. And so I believe that the project that we are launching with the island, which is a settlement employment program for refugees coming from a private, speaks so much about and the innovation and how we are trying to drive and pivot you know our social commitment and welcoming women that today might be isolated at home and we believe in them we believe in their potential and we want to invite them to go outside home learn create opportunities create community and be part of this community it's so great to see your passion and thank you so much for being with us today Constanza thank you so much for the invitation I'm so excited to be here thank you and we'll be right back after this break
and welcome back. Now we're with John Finn with the School Lunch Association. So John, welcome today. Thank you, Lori. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. And, you know, with the upcoming school year starting, you know, it's so important to avail of your services. So tell us a little bit about your organization and your role there. Certainly. Uh, so the School Lunch Association is actually perhaps one of the longest running charitable school food programs in the country. Uh, founded in 1989, um, defined by a need in the inner city of St. John's. In uh, 1989, the first school was Bishop Field and meals were served to children there. Fast forward 35 years, the program currently operates in 42 schools, uh, primarily through the St. John's metro area, uh, with a couple of sites in Clarenville and Gander. Um, it's a charitable program uh, in the sense that we ask parents to pay what they can for mm -hmm. their children's meals each day. Um, so the, the program is available to children in all of the participating schools, uh, the 42 schools, uh, and we ask children, uh, or sorry, families to pay for their children in, in what they can fashion. So we ask $5 a day for a meal, uh, and if that means for your family, when you get to our sub-checkout um, e-commerce site, uh, if you can only afford $2 for, for a particular meal, or if you can only afford $1, or perhaps if it's nothing at all, um, that's essentially the, 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 the basis of our model. Um, and supplemented by that uh, as a charity, a uh, registered charity since uh, the early 90s, 1992 I believe we officially became a registered charity. Um, we accept donations, uh, from, we're grateful to have lots of businesses and corporations, so that's kind of the, the just of our model. Um, but we're currently feeding about 7,000 children a day, wow. which equates to just over a million point one or a million point two meals a year. Wow, that's incredible. So, you know, are there any criteria that uh, families need to, to be mindful of if they're applying for your services or is it for all families? How does that work? Um, so no criteria. Uh, essentially, uh, any child enrolled in one of our participating schools, any family can, can register their, their child or children. Um, we have no specific criteria whatsoever. It's essentially up to the family if they want to partake in our program on that particular day. Uh, it, our program was designed as a non-stigmatizing program. Mm -hmm. So when I say non-stigmatizing, what I mean is essentially uh, when you proceed to the lunch line in any one of these 42 cafeterias, uh, the same meal that is offered to you is offered to me. Um, and so, whereas perhaps, Lori, when you and I went to school, you can remember the days you, you would line up in the cafeteria and I would probably order the pizza and you might get the french fries. And it's pretty telling as to what each family can afford. So maybe I can only afford a muffin. And in front of me, you have the pizza and the fries and what have you. Um, our program is designed in the sense that uh, there is no change of cash at hands for the children. That's all taken care of online in advance. Um, and then each child has a meal and neither you nor I or nor any of the children know how much our family paid for that meal. That's really good. And like you said, back when we were doing it, you know, um, in, in school, you know, you, you pay for what you got, you got your change. So that's really, really nice that you can see that, you know, families avail that and that you, you do that Absolutely. with your service. And uh, so what is the registration process like for families who want to avail of your services? Yeah, so um, our registration actually, the beautiful thing about it is it's open all year round. Um, so next, uh, early now in September, um, we'll have registration open and we'll ask parents to register their children and that's important because we need to obtain um, just basic data from, from the parents with respect to communication methods for them with, with you know, when, when does our menus open, when does our menu close. Um, so the only thing about the registration is you only need to register once, um, but when you choose the order becomes important to us. Uh, we procure a lot of our food uh, weeks in advance. So essentially each month uh, we would have a one week window. So for example, October, I'm just, just guessing now, it's not off the top of my head, but say October 4th, the menus would open for the month of November. Mm -hmm. So between October 4th and October 11th, you would have that one week to review November's menu with your child and say, do you like this particular item today? Or maybe you don't want this particular item this day. And then we would ask the parents to place that order. As a large <coughs> social enterprise, this allows us to procure in advance in bulk, and then we can essentially prepare. So if you think about a restaurant and each special they put on every weekend or what have you, they need to prepare inventory and they have no idea how many patrons are going to come to the restaurant. 
For us, it's the opposite. We procure everything in advance, we know the numbers in advance, so we have a stable system of ensuring we have the right amount of food. Um, and that becomes extremely important for us because every school kitchen is designed a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, you can imagine uh, St. Peter's Primary would be the one that sticks out to me in Mount Pearl. There's 700 children there uh, this year from grades kindergarten to grades three. Um, and so that's a lot of children. And the space there is great. We have walk-in commercial coolers and freezers. If you just went further down the road to Mary Queen of the World on Topsail Road, um, that kitchen was built 65 years ago so there's only so much inventory we can we can hold there so we procure everything in advance uh, so we ask for the ordering timeline to kind of be a bit a bit stringent however we, we always have flexibility to ensure that each child gets a meal um, but essentially registration is open all year round so if a new family moved into town in the middle of March or April, essentially any, any child in any participating school can register. So what if a kid now missed school for whatever reason, they were sick or they were off, how does that disrupt, this, or does it disrupt the services for, for school lunch? Um, yes and no. Uh, I mean, essentially, we, we our staff, uh, with tremendous staff, kudos to them, there's about a, approximately 100 employees spread out across these 42 locations. Um, they have great communication with the administrative team at each school and the secretaries to, to kind of get a, a, an idea for absenteeism rates and what that might look like. Um, to kind of adjust their numbers. But with respect to the family that pays for said meal, if they feel their child was out sick and uh, for a week or so, and they, they, you know, which is I just paid for all these meals and my child can't partake, we just ask them, listen, you know what, next month when you go to order, um, when you get to the subtotal at our checkout, it's always adjustable. So if you feel you lost five meals and it was five dollars a meal you can simply deduct twenty five dollars at the at the checkout level and uh, that will essentially compensate for for what you uh, what you paid for in the previous month so you also mentioned menus so how do you um, you know generate your menus or what's on the current menus for the uh, upcoming school year so the menus uh, become tricky. Again, I just alluded to, uh, I guess, each kitchen being a bit different. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine a commercial kitchen, uh, i.e. Uh, St. Peter's Primary or like St. Teresa's uh, on Monday Pond. Beautiful facility, mm -hmm. state-of-the-art, walk-in coolers, freezers. Um, and then we would have a small school like Bishop Field. And the kitchen of Bishop Field is essentially smaller than the area we are currently <laughs> uh, chatting in. Um, but we have a great chef there who pulls off a couple hundred meals a day for children's, but each menu for each school is designed to meet the uh, inventory control needs and what they can handle. Um, but essentially we offer a hot protein item. Every day it's a hot lunch. We don't do sandwiches. Uh, we don't do deep fried. Oh. Um, we adhere and work closely with the school, uh, provincial healthy school food guidelines. Um, so each child will get a, a hot protein, uh, three servings of fruits and vegetables, and a milk or water. So for example, uh, on a pizza day, which is very popular, you may have a pizza, uh, it could be a Caesar salad, and then it would be uh, some cucumber slices on the side, um, and then a milk or a water as well. Um, Super balanced and nutritious. We try to balance, and the nutrition is the key part, um, is certainly key. And, yeah, and again, so e each school could differ, but we try to offer a menu item that appeals to the most children possible. Uh, it's extremely challenging in a short 45 minute, 40, 45 minute window for lunch for children. Um, regardless if you're here or New Brunswick or Ontario, it, every school has this challenge. You have a very short window to prepare lunch and considering your population of how many children you wish to serve and that menu item, uh, there's a fine balance there, but we're very fortunate. I'm very fortunate uh, to have a tremendous staff that uh, seems to execu execute this uh, quite efficiently uh, day in, day out. And, you know, donations are very important for your organization. So how can people donate and help in regards to that? So donations are uh, essentially what keeps us going. Um, our, our model is a social enterprise model. So every time a, a family pays for, for a meal, that money comes in to uh, essentially allow us to uh, buy food and, and pay, pay employees to, to prepare the food. Um, with respect to the pay what you can model, there's naturally a shortfall with what families can pay. So donations are extremely important. Um, you can visit us at www.schoollunch.ca. We're pleased to have so many parents uh, and teachers and administrators who contribute to our program uh, to allow us to keep going. 
And, you know, with regards to that, you know, you're administrating, you said 42, 43. Three schools now? 42 currently, uh, or 43 this fall, my apologies, it will be 43 this fall. So are you planning on expanding or what's your, um, you know, I guess what's in your um, focus and for your, for the future for School Lunch Association? Yeah, no, well, uh, just to give you an idea, so in 2016, just about eight years ago, we were in approximately 15, 16 schools, today we're in 43. So that's almost a tripling of wow. size uh, in just an eight year period. Uh, we've been working closely with the provincial government to look at ways to incorporate other regions of the province. Uh, that work is ongoing. We, we certainly have our eyes on expansion. Our, our goal um, is essentially to, to ensure that no, no child goes hungry uh, and that every child has an opportunity to have a hot, nutritious lunch each and every single day. That's incredible, and you're doing wonderful things, and you know, seeing so many families availing of your services is just so great, and you know, we wish you all the success, and, uh, and hopefully you get more donations for the upcoming uh, school year. Certainly, no, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, and anybody wants to reach out anytime, by all means, we have, we have a tremendous number of corporate sponsors and businesses each year that, that, that chime in with their support, and uh, it certainly doesn't go unnoticed. Thank you so much, John, for being with us today. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. And we'll be right back after the break. Your opinion matters, and we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us using our viewer feedback line, your direct connection to shaping the shows you love. It's easy. Just grab your phone, scan the QR code on your screen, and take our quick survey. Share your thoughts, and let's make your viewing experience even better. Thank you so much for tuning in for another fabulous episode of Out of the Fog. So if your little one is looking for new designs, fashions, or accessories, please be sure to check out Newborn Lander on Cashin Avenue or on their website. Or if your child wants to avail of the services associated with uh, School Lunch Association, they can certainly check out their website as well. Until next time, much love. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. We want to hear from you. Provide feedback on this show or find out how you can get involved. Call, email us, or scan the QR code to take our quick survey. For me, it all started here. I do my best work here. Scores! Oh my goodness! This guy's dangerous from here, here, and here. We're watching history in the making here. Are you watching this? And our fans are up here. I'm here for it. It's all about what's up here and what's in here. Sportsnet, here for hockey. Here are three reasons why your social strategies should include Rogers TV. Reason number one is we have hyper-local audiences. The community TV channel gives you a chance to engage with people where you live. So you really get to know your neighbors and they get to know you. Reason number two is we can help diversify your distribution. With social media, it's really important to be able to have a wider audience. And Rogers TV can actually help complement your online presence by delivering to a different audience. And it's actually really easy to repurpose your existing content or to just create new material specifically tailored for community TV. And finally, reason number three is we can help enhance your credibility and your trust. And by aligning your brand with Rogers TV, you can tap into that trust that viewers have. This can boost your reputation, especially among viewers who favor local businesses and value community involvement. One, two, three. It's that easy to build your local audience with Rogers TV. This fall on Rogers TV, we'll be airing your RNC, Compassion and Action.